Hi guys and welcome to another fly tying tutorial. What you see in the vise is a little bug designed specifically for the grailing. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the vise then is a Hanak H230 barbless hook. This one's at size 16, it's on a medium wire and it's in black nickel. And I've coupled that with a 2.3 millimeter copper eco bead from Hanak. Now, all flies don't have to be complicated and this is one of the simplest bugs you can tie. So first thing I'm going to do is just add a little spot of super glue to the shank of the hook. And the thread I'm going to be using today is from Semperfy. It's the Nano Silk in 12O, and as you can see, it's black. That's certainly what I'm going to start with. So I've just used my thread to spread the super glue up the shank, and I'm going to run a bed of thread and bring it back to the bead. Then I can come in and take away my rat's tail. Now, for the tail of this fly, I'm just using a bronze mallard feather. Now, when I go through the bag of bronze mallard I have, certain feathers just won't make good for dabbler flies. So I save them for tailing on bugs. And what I'm going to do is just take approximately a pinky nail's worth of fibres and pull that away. And when I pull it together, most of the tips should marry up. And I want to tie that in about the length of the shank of the hook. So dress that up, catch it in at the end, and just check that that's going to look okay. And that's just about going to serve my purposes. I do like the tail a little bushier than that, if I'm honest, but What's done is done. I could always add some more, but I'm not going to bother. Now, for the rib of the fly, I'm going to use some gold wire. This is 0.3 millimetres thick. And once I've put the dubbing on, it will kind of be hidden, but it, it will serve a purpose, which will become apparent. So, yeah, as I was saying, you don't need to always be tying complicated patterns for fishing. The simplest of things will catch you fish. Now, I've just caught in my wire on my side and I'm going to use some of Andrew's scruffy dubbing. Uh, this is uh, Lindsay's Killer Shrimp Mix, which Andrew's kindly done a custom blend for me. But any sort of hare's ear works well with this pattern. And all I'm going to do is get a fairly healthy amount onto my thread. I'm using my thumb and forefinger in my right hand just to spin that on to the silk. And once I'm content, I've got enough on. Just take that piece that was sticking out. I'm going to come in at the base of my fly and simply come up the shank of the hook all the way to the bead. When I get to the bead, my excess dubbing, I'm going to go back down, come back through and make sure my thread's finished at the bead. Now don't be worried, I know it looks like a hot mess at the moment, but all will be revealed in a bit. So I'm going to take my wire now, come in the opposite direction to how I've wound my thread on. And I'm looking for between three and four tons of the wire. And as I said, you would hardly be able to see it because it has been caught under, well, in my dubbing. So it's quite difficult to see. Well, I've got that in with a couple of tons. I'm going to cover a couple of tons in front. Then I can simply twist away my wire. What I'm going to do next then is another couple of turns for safekeeping and I'm going to come in with my dubbing brush I'm going to rough all that out so yeah a lot of people um, 
and myself included, think grayling are always feeding on the bottom, you need to get heavy flies, and uh, that's often true, but not always, especially uh, in the month of October. You'll often get them coming up and even taking dries. But uh, this is a lighter nymph, and it does account for its fair share of grayling. So I've got that just looking how I like it. And any sort of hairs that are sticking out that are maybe overly long or you're not happy with, you can come in with your tweezers and just remove them. Now what I'm going to do is just whip finish off my nano silk behind the bead. We're done with that. Then I can come in and remove my thread. Okay, now I like to use Globe Right number 5 for my collar on this particular fly. Uh, you can use number 7, it also works quite well. But as you can see, it's quite a hot orange. And what I want to do is get all them hairs slicked back out the way, come just in behind the bead with two or three turns. Once you're content that you're attached to the fly, you can then come in and remove your waist end. Now, how I like to finish this off is with some Solaris Bone Dry. And what I like to do is get a fair bit onto my thread. And then wrap it up. Once you're content, you've got the whole collar coated with UV resin. You can come in with your whip finish tool. Three turns will do the job. And then snip away. And then all you need to do is give it a zap with your torch. Now, uh, one of the viewers commented that uh, I shine the light in the camera and it could affect your eyes. And uh, please, could I use the rotary function to cure the resin in the future? So I've managed to remember that, which is amazing considering the age I am. But uh, there we go. And that's the fly finished. Now, it may be simple, but I can guarantee you that this is super effective on the grayling. Also works with a pink collar. You know, it's it's really up to yourself, but very, very effective and well worth tying. Uh, if you've got any patterns you'd like to share with me, I would love to hear all about them in the comments section below. And if you're getting value from the videos, please give it a like. And I'll see you all next time.